Hey, what is going on? I am back here again with another episode of a good old Craven some Raven. Got a fever, and the only prescription is some more Ravens content. But you know what? Training camp is almost here. It's about to start going down. We're finally going to have some content to talk about, other than me just rambling on about nothing. So in this episode, I'm going to ramble on about nothing. Pretty much. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna go over uh, positions, my position on positions, and not Kama Sutra types. No sex positions. This isn't Urban Dictionary. I'm talking football positions. You know what I think is more important. Maybe I think a position will be more important for the Ravens than another team. So I'll get into that. Uh, no sponsors today. I didn't come up with any. I mean, I didn't get requested to do any. So there's no need in. No need in doing that. But uh, it has been a while since I've recorded. It's been over a week. I was I was in Vegas, in Las Vegas. Baby, Las Vegas. Oh, yeah. Um, hit, the, hit the strip, hit the casino. Won some money, lost some money. Got drunk, stayed drunk. That's, it's Vegas. Smoked some weed. It's legal there. So that's pretty, uh, pretty cool. It's kind of crazy. Uh, they got... California got hit with that earthquake, and I could feel it in Vegas. And we were actually in the Shake Shack while it was going on, so we were shaking in the Shake Shack. It was it was pretty nuts, man. Because uh, earthquakes, they're just weird, because everyone is like, are you moving the table? Are you moving the table? And I thought I was going to like pass out or something, because something was wrong. It's like, why do I feel like I'm moving? But I'm obviously not. I'm on solid ground. I feel like I'm moving. And so you get all disorientated, and then you look up, and everyone else is fucking looking around like, what the hell's going on? And someone's like, I think it's an earthquake. Because they had just gotten hit by one the other day before that. So that was pretty crazy. It messes you up. Everyone did a drunk check. Like, I'm not that drunk. I'm not that drunk. And then get back to normal. But, you know, I wanted to record while I was over there, you know, in front of the sports book and betting on games and stuff. But it just... I was too drunk. I feel like it would have been a shit show. And, you know, finally, when you get back to the hotel, you're most likely still drunk and you just want to pass out or you just want to wake up, get some food in you, hit the buffet. So it just didn't really work out. And finally, I'm back. I'm recovered. Got back to work. And it's like, I, I got to record an episode. I can't leave my five peeps hanging. You with me. I'm with you. Um, so thanks for if you listen to this and thanks for sticking by and I guess we'll just get right into it. So, obviously, the quarterback is the most important position. Offense, defense, maybe in all of sports. He, you know, touches the ball every single play. And it's without him, there is, yeah, there's no winning with a shit quarterback. I mean, maybe if your defense is good, but... So just ask the Ravens in like 2000 or... Either way, Dilfer, he, he kind of, he had something, you know, he wasn't completely useless, but you need someone who's inept somewhat, and I think on that front, the Ravens, I think they'll be fine. I'm a huge fan of Lamar Jackson. If you've listened to any of my podcasts before, I will, I will go on for hours about how I think Lamar is the Oh, shit, I accidentally paused it. I don't know where I stopped, but I was talking about Lamar Jackson. We're high budget here. It's called being professional, okay? But, uh, yeah. I don't want to ramble too much about Lamar Jackson. I think he, he is a good enough cornerstone that we can build around. I think uh, what he brings to the table with his running and he, he, even his passing. I don't think he's as deficient as every national media member wants to think. Maybe even some of the fans think. Maybe I'm a little hyped on him, but I, I just truly believe he is a special kind of player. Uh, once in a generation type talent. Uh, some of the moves that he puts on, it's like, whew, I've said it before, he's got the sauce elite level sauce but so i'm just going to talk about offense i guess I'm, I'm already talking about the quarterback so yeah on offense the quarterback super super important touches the ball every play and with lamar like i said i think we're good on that front but it's how do you build the pieces around the quarterback if the quarterback's the most important position what's the second most important on offense what do you want to build around the quarterback to give your team the most success and have and have some good plays against the defense. And I think I think offensive line most important. 
I think and next to the quarterback, I think you need a good, strong, healthy offensive line. I think we do have a pretty decent, good offensive line. Pretty good and decent. Let's just say that again because that's the, I said the same thing twice. Good, decent. You know, he's pretty, pretty sweet. They're pretty sweet up front. But uh, the, my only concern is we don't know who's starting at left guard. It could be Alex Lewis, Alex Lewis, but Alex Lewis could also not be on the team. It wouldn't surprise me either way. Um, my other concern is who is our backup tackle? I know it's James Hurst, but Hurst is the worst. You know, he's the one that caused Flacco to get that injury. You know, it is a fluke, but you know what? Nah, that was his fault. He let his guy through. But who who is our backup? Greg Sanat? Great. I, what has he done? What have you done for me lately? Uh, it, it, and it is a concern because I think we do have two really good tackles in Ronnie Stanley and Zeus Brown. We should try, like, probably pay both those guys and just build around them, keep them as long as we can. But if one of them were to go down, which has happened to Ronnie Stanley a couple times, you know, in a game he gets banged up, you know, what? Who who do we de- who do we have who do we put in that you would feel confident in you need you need three starting right tackles I think you know some someone who when they come in there's there's no drop off in play because stout offensive line not only protects the quarterback but the running game and basically everything on the offense it keeps everything going because the only way to interrupt an offense is to just have a shit offensive line no matter how good your quarterback is he might get one playoff you know he, there's no once the quarterback's flustered, there's nothing, nothing you can do. And that's all on the offensive line. And, uh, like, Zeus Brown, I, fucking Zeus Juice, I think he's really good. He is a big old boy. I call him Zeus for a reason. And I think once he gets his mitts on somebody, it's game over. Now, if he can continue to realize how big and strong he is and really start to maul and manhandle people, especially in this new run game that I think we're going to have, or like everyone's been saying, we're going to have uh, this elite level season of uh, running, of like a running game. You know, he's going to be a real important part of that, you know, running off the right side, running off of him because he's a big body. And towards the end, he's going to demoralize somebody. And so we can just run off him. And really just put the game away. And I think that is a real possibility. But my my concern is that left guard, you know, someone's probably going to step in and do just fine. But we don't know who it is. I, I'd, I'd like to go into a season knowing who the starters are. And that's just a personal preference. Maybe maybe you like living on the edge. Maybe you're a little crazy. You know, I thought I was a little crazy, but whew, buddy, you're crazy. And another thing about the offensive line in the center, like the, probably... I think the most important part of the uh, the offensive line, the guy in the center, the guy at center, I guess, who is in the center. That's why they call it center. Center your chi. Because he's touching the ball every play, too. And if there's ever an issue with that, if he's inept, if he sucks, yeah, inept, a fancy way of saying, yes, suck. If he if he sucks, then you, you, won't have, you won't be able to get a playoff, you know? If he hikes the ball to no man's land, just hikes it over the quarterback's head, throws it at his feet, or just gets blown up, then you got your quarterback. No matter what, he's got to go right or left. He's got to he's got to pick and choose, and then everything's off. A lot of the passing game is done through timing, and if someone's coming up through the center, gets a hand on the ball because the center snapped it terribly, that's turnovers and just. The timing of everything is off, and it, it just won't work. Wow, I feel really rusty. I haven't done this in a minute. Don't know. You know, positions on positions. I think that's what I'll call this one. But yeah, so definitely offensive line is the most important part on the offense besides the quarterback. So next, uh, it's probably going to be a little bit different. Uh, I think tight end, well, just for the Ravens at least, I think tight end is the third most important position on offense. I'll explain. Because I think they're just, they are just an extension of the offensive line. They're basically quicker offensive linemen who can catch the ball. 
And so you got the quarterback, uh, the offensive line, then you got then you got your tight ends. So it's are they going to block? Are they going to go out and take a pass or catch a ball? Yeah, fuck, I am rusty, Jesus. But you know, it's a it's that indecision on the defensive part, which is what makes the tight end position so unique to football and to a lot of offensive coordinators. Like this, that's why they like to use them. It's because you know, are they blocking or are they going out? It's it's play action without even having to do play action. It's the defense is having to read and react and wait for the guy to go out on a route. When like compared to a wide receiver, it's like we know you're going out on on a route. We know you're gonna go up and try to catch the ball. But when it comes to the tight end, you know if he comes running out, you think, oh, all right, I guess he's running a route, but he could still come up and block you. And either way, it's the defense is always more hesitant with the tight end. And I think Greg Roman loves to use his tight ends. So I think. Uh, Mark Andrews, Hayden Hurst, Nick Boyle, I think all three are going to have a huge year. And we might even keep a fourth tight end or like a fullback, either being Patrick Ricard or that scarf guy from uh, Delaware, have another uh, Delaware tight end. I mean, he looks part. He looks like a looks like a big dude. Looks like he could handle the NFL body-wise. You know, maybe he – I don't know how skilled he is. We'll see in training camp. Well, so we'll – just got to wait it off, man. Just got to wait it off, bro. So I think, yeah, the tight end position is going to be super important for the Ravens this year. And, and um, yeah, and that's why I have them as a more important position than the running back because I think with a good offensive line and good tight ends, you could put anybody back there, and I think the Ravens have kind of proved that over the years. They've just thrown and go, go fuck yourself guy out there, you know. Like, Hi, I'm go fuck yourself at a go fuck yourself you. The. Go fuck yourself state. So, <laughs> the go fuck yourself state. Is that like a state of mind? Is that like the people on Jackass, they have a, the go fuck yourself state. Either way. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, so tight end is three for me. I just think the versatility that that position kind of gives you if you have, if you have good players there, I think it's, I think it's important, like super important, super, I don't know, it just allows you to do a lot more. I guess versatility, that's what that word means. And like when I'm thinking about, like, when I'm thinking about this, I'm almost thinking about, like in general when I'm talking about the positions and which is more important, it's not, maybe it's not so much which position is important, which it, I mean, it kind of is, but I'm thinking it like, and PFF grades, they rate your whole team. They rate each player at their respective positions. So, you know, a, uh, a 90 guy, a guy who's rated at 90 is just as good as someone else who's rated at 90 at a different position. So let's say you have a, a, 90, a, a 90 rated quarterback and a 90 rated wide, wide receiver. Now, they're both equally as good at their position. But it's, you know, which, which is more important. Uh, obviously, the quarterback's more important. You'd rather have the 90-rated the quarterback than the 90-rated wide receiver. So that's kind of how I'm coming through, go, uh, like, coming to this. I probably should have said that at the top, but I just kind of figured it out just now that that's what I was doing. <clears throat> this is very professional, okay? Get off my back. How'd you get in here? Um, so... Yeah, so done with the tight end. So I guess fourth most important position on offense. You got to go running back at this point because I don't think wide receiver is as important as everyone thinks. I know it's a passing league, but we'll get to that when we get there. Okay. So, yeah, I think running back, especially in the Ravens offense, we are going to be super run heavy. And so you need at least someone someone suitable, you know. Um, you know, the – the running back with with a good offensive line, like I was kind of saying earlier, with a good offensive line, you can have a Gus Edwards, a uh, Terrence West, a Justin Forsett. Guys who, like when you get them, you're like, oh, you're not too excited about them. But when you, when you got them behind a good offensive line, you know, that elevates their game. 
they can get you a thousand yards with a good offensive line. With a bad offensive line, there's maybe one or two running backs in the league that could probably handle that. Maybe even just one. Nah, I'd say two. You got like Saquon Barkley and Alvin Kamara. Those guys, it doesn't matter what shit offensive lineman you put in front of them. You know, let me block for you, bro. You got this. You, you the man, man. Like, as you saw, you saw what Saquon did last year. He was killing it for the Giants, and they had a shitty offensive line. I don't know about shitty, but it just didn't look good. It looked like Saquon was doing all that by himself. But I think with our decent offensive line, or, you know, hopes to be good offensive line, we're going to be opening holes up for our guys, and that's how you can do that running back by committee because we don't have that one guy where it's like, oh, he has to be in right now because he doesn't. We can really get running backs on the discount. And I think everyone's kind of realized this, and that's why the devaluing of the running back has been a thing for so long. It's just they've realized that, listen, offensive line is way more important. You know, if you can open up Mack truck holes all game, you're going to have a 1,000-yard rusher. It doesn't matter who it is. Now, it is important, the running back position, you know, keep a tempo. You need a guy who can get you that short yardage. But like I said, it's almost more important to have the offensive line push him for you. Like, you could have me back there at, at running back. You just have me everywhere on the field. You know, put me in a, at tackle. Put me in at running back. Don't do it. I'm just, it's just a phrase because it's true. If, if you got everyone blocked up, you put me back there and I'll go score a touchdown, okay? If I'm not getting hit, I'll be fine. So, yeah. That's really all you got to say about the running back position. And, I mean, it has been devalued over the years because, like I was saying, everyone has kind of slowly but surely realized this. And it's, and it's true. They are a dime a dozen. They're all very skilled. And it takes, it takes a generational type talent or like a, I don't know, it's just like a one in a million chance to have the skills that warrant being that guy. You know, being that guy that everyone talks about because there's, there's a lot of really good running backs. A lot of them. And so to be the top of the top and be way more than that, just uh, like an icon almost, like a Zeke, like a Saquon, like an Alvin Kamara, um, you, you got to be something special. You got to have the sauce, <laughs> as I like to say. So with that being said, I guess my final, most, I guess, least important position on the offense, I guess I'm just doing these in groups. Um, so I'm going with the wide receivers because there's not just four positions on the offense. You know, you got quarterback, running back, tackle, guard, center, uh, slot receiver, wide receiver. You got tight ends, but I'm just going to kind of clump them into groups, you know. So I think wide receiver, especially in our fo- offense, is the least important. Now, it is a passing league, so it does seem like it wouldn't make sense. But for me, it makes total sense. You only need them to make a few big plays here and there. That doesn't make them important. You win in the trenches, and you win with scheme. Now, you can scheme a guy open, scheme a wide receiver open, but that's the scheme that's more important. Um, I just think... We're going to be doing a lot more running than passing, and it's they were just the last position. I just thought all the other positions were more important. You know, I'd rather have I'd rather put five tight ends out there and throw some out wide because they're better blockers. I'd rather have a better blocker than someone who can only catch the ball. You know, the more you can do, the more important you are on the football field. So the more you can be disguised, the more versatile you are, the better your chances of having success. And I think. Um, I just think wide receivers can't aren't really that versatile. They're versatile in their route running, but route running is route running. They the defense knows what you're going to do. Generally, I mean, doesn't mean they can guard you, but they know that you're going out and trying to catch a trying to catch a football. Now you get tons of yards from wide receivers, and so that's it's really important. But I just think the other positions it's more important. You know, if you're going to have that ninety that a PFF 90 guy, I'd rather have it at any other position besides wide receiver on the offense specifically because um, I don't know how many elite receivers have won for a team, you know, like 
I've seen running backs single-handedly take their team to the playoffs. I've seen great offensive line play take teams to the playoffs. I've seen great quarterbacks take teams to the playoffs. Maybe not so much just tight ends, but I haven't seen just a wide receiver do that because it is a team sport, and I just think those other players are more important. Now imagine if the Texans had a good offensive line. DeAndre Hopkins, I think, is the best wide receiver. So imagine if he had some actual help. But he can only do so much. You know, like wide receivers, you, there's a reason they're so far away from the ball. You know, the most important positions, you give them the ball. And they're really far away from the ball. Uh, it kind of doesn't make sense, but that's just the way I see it. They, they are not in proximity of the football on every single play. So that, I guess that's it for the offense. So going over to the defense, this is this is tougher to think about. You know what, you know, pass rush versus corners or defensive line, linebackers, safety. So I don't know how I'm going to lump these people in. If not, how I'm going to lump them together. But I think I'm just going to start. You got to start up front again. This is a game that's won and lost in the trenches, and I know it's high flying, high scoring. It's all on the outside nowadays, but I think I think it still is one in the trenches because the first way to lose a game is to lose the battle on the inside. Now, you can still win if you do that, but it takes 30,000 points. It takes, you know, it takes 60 points a game if you're going to if you're going to lose the trench battle. So you need you need those big boys up front. Don't don't give them any free yards. And I'm not saying pass rush. I'm saying just defensive line. Because if the offense can run on you, it's going to be a long game. Because once once you can, once it's proven that they can run on you and get some easy yards, that opens up everything. Because then you're going to have to put resources towards stopping that. And then they just throw it over your head. And that's what I'm hoping our offense is able to do with the running abilities of Lamar and our running backs and our skilled offensive line. But... I think the first way to stop that is to have a stout defensive line because not only do they keep the line still, but they also take on blockers and allow our linebackers to you know, find the open hole, find the runner, and uh, meet them in the hole and hopefully tackle for a loss. And then bing, bada, bing, bada, boom. You got a good play. Strip sack. Boom. So, yeah, defensive line. This is the interior defensive line, I'll say. And then second, I'm going to go I'm gonna go ahead and say I'm going to go corner. You know, I think as Ravens fans, we know firsthand what not having good corners will do, what having scrubs out on the outside will do to you, what one simple injury can do to your team on defense. Um, all those years, and Jimmy Smith would go down, and it's like, oh, well, there goes the fucking season. There goes the fucking defense. Because without Jimmy Smith, without our elite cornerback, we uh, we're just getting bombed on. You know, we're we're allowing those huge passes. Cause so it's like the first and most important thing to stop is the run, and the second most important thing to stop is the pass. You know, it's that's the way I see it. So if you can stop the pass, you can stop a lot of things. And I think the best way, most consistent way to stop the pass is with the cornerbacks not so much the pass rush i think pass pass rush is very important but in that whole pass rush versus uh cornerback play debate i think i think the winner goes to the corners i i just do because so i think with great cover corners you you cause the the quarterback to pause maybe not throw or maybe he does throw and makes a stupid decision and it gets batted away it it uh you just can't, I don't know, he just can't get the ball off. There's, there's no sense. You get demoralized. There's no sense in throwing it if all you're doing is intercepting it or batting the ball down. And then it's like, now what do you do? You're going you're gonna to run the ball? I mean, we've proven that we can stop that. So I think it's super, super important. And more so than a pass rush because I think next on the list is a pass rush. Now the reason I have pass rush second is... Because I was talking about that 
90 rating guy? Like, would you rather have a rated 90 corner or a rated 90 pass rush? I think the rated 90 quarterback or cornerback is going to have more success against wide receivers than a 90 rated pass rush. You know, Von Miller, one of the best in the game. And, you know, so he only makes an impact on like two, three plays out of the game where it's like a sack and it's like, oh, wow, that's dominant. That's why you need a good pass rush because, oh, they won't be able to pass the ball if you got such a good pass rush. But that's only once or twice a game. Like two, three sacks a game, that's a good total for a game for one player. Now, I think with when it comes to like the cornerback, you know, they can tip three, four passes and get an interception and, you know, tackle on the outside. I think they just are more impactful on the game. That's just my opinion. You know, I don't want to rely on someone getting to the quarterback because, I mean, that, that'll that wreck a play quicker than a quarterback can. That's for damn sure. But they they whiff more likely than not. You know, that's why QB pressure is a stat because they pass rushers, they whiff all the time. If they get through right away, which is how you really disrupt the quarterback, they they whiff the quarterback a lot, you know. That's getting those sacks. It's usually a. It's either a, you beat your guy right off the line right away, and you get the sack, or in most cases they they miss them because the quarterback sees them coming. There's one little juke while they're while the defender's running full speed, and then they go out and pass the ball to a cornerback who sucks to a wide receiver who's being guarded by a cornerback who sucks, and so they're able to complete the pass. Another way you get a pass rush is a coverage sack. So you literally, I think the, I think the coverage sack is easier to get than a pass rush interception. If that makes sense. You know, they both kind of complement each other, but I think it's easier for the cornerback play to affect the pass rusher <clears throat> easier than it would be to have the pass rusher play affect the cornerback play. That's just... That's just my philosophy. I'd love to hear your opinion on it. You know, comment. Let me know. Hit me up. I got an email address. It's uh, csrpod at gmail.com. Hit me up. Ask me a question. Ask me anything. AMA, baby. AMA. Um, yeah, but the pass rush is super important. They are very complimentary, but it is the, one of the great debates in football, you know, which is more important. And I believe cornerback play is more important. Now, next on my list, I'm going to go ahead and say safety. Uh, because this is a passing league, I think the safeties on the back end are more important. You know, they're playing a lot of, a lot of zone coverage, you know, seeing where the quarterback's going with the ball. You know, they make a lot of splash plays because not only are they in the back end, you know, wa being ball hawks and watching watching where the quarterback's going with his eyes, they also drop down in the box and try to make plays against the run. And I think a versatile safety uh, is super important in this game, having an elite level safety. You can see it all over the league. It's super important. Um, you know, not as important as the other positions. It's like a, like a luxury item, you know, because... Uh, a good safety does nothing for you if he's the only good player on your defense. Now, if you got decent defensive line play, decent corners, a good safety, now that'll add some elite, elite talent to you. It's almost like a boost to the whole team. But, yeah, like the, the safety, it's like a, I don't know, like a, like a power-up. I, I was playing this balloon tower defense, and there's a tower that you put in there, it doesn't pop any balloons. But what it does is it power ups all of the other all of the other towers. So I think that's kind of what a safety is. Like you can't just put you can't just have a good safety, you know, it because what they do is they boost everyone else, you know. And having other good players on your defense allows the safety to do what he does best, which is just help out everybody. You know, he's kind of like the don't let anybody get behind you. Make a play when it comes to you. Just don't overstretch yourself. You know, you do you kind of. That's what we had in Ed Reed all those years. But, you know, we had a good defense around him. If Ed Reed was our only playmaker in that era, you know, he might not have had nearly as much success. 
because he's going to have to do everything. You know, he's just a good complementary piece. A safety is just like a really good complementary piece to the defense. But I, less, I left inside linebacker for last. Here's why. I think the position's getting devalued. I think it's becoming just an all-safety kind of group. All the inside linebackers, they're all pretty much safeties at this point. When they're coming out of college or all the good inside linebackers, they have safety skills. They just happen to be just in-the-box safeties. And um, I think with a good defensive line, you just need someone who's fast and knows how to meet someone in the hole. Because really a good defensive line can stop any run game in its tracks. The, the inside linebacker is just supposed to be the cleanup crew for like a running, running game, you know. But a safety can do that just as well. I don't know. We've, just, we've had Ray Lewis, and he's one of the all-time greats, so it feels like I'm downplaying the position. But I just, I, th- I don't know. I, think, um, I just don't think the position is as important as it used to be. And, like, if you're going to rank all the, like, power, you're going to power rank the positions on defense, I think inside linebacker might honestly be the least important. Obviously, you got some teams like the Cowboys, they got two very good inside linebackers, and they, they make the defense run. But they don't ever have elite play because they don't have anything else. And I think, I just think it starts from, it starts on the starts on the inside defensive line, goes to the outside corner, then inside back end. You know, allow nothing deep, allow nothing deep by you. And oh yeah, and another thing with corners, like if you if you have the ability to just go one on one with your cornerbacks, if you have the skill, the skill level, like I think the Ravens do, in Jimmy Smith, Marlon Humphrey, uh, Brandon Carr, Tavon Young. Like with all those guys, I think they can all go one on one. So that just leaves more, more players to go up the middle on a blitz. You know that that allows you to throw more resources at the line of scrimmage. So. So yeah, I guess that's my uh, position by position, my position on positions. I mean, this is it's only thirty two minutes. Shit, I normally try to do these for longer. Yeah, but I don't know. I saw I did see uh in other news. In other news beep to beep 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 to beep 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 breaking news tonight at nine. Um I saw Melvin Gordon trying to get traded. Like what? He said trade or die basically. He th- he thought the Chargers were ride and die and he thought he was being disrespected. So I don't think the Ravens should try to trade for him. I I don't want him on the team, you know, shanana where your knees at. Sha na 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 knees knees. Ooh, Melvin Gordon's got no knees. So that was crazy, man. Is, is he gonna hold out? Does he think he's Le'Veon Bell? I mean I don't approve of what Le'Veon Bell did, but he was definitely a better player than Melvin Gordon. And he's Melvin Gordon's gonna be making five million dollars this year. I don't know what he thinks he, he's worth. But, I mean, Mark Ingram, he's only making $3 million a year, and I'd rather have Mark Ingram, if I'm being honest. I don't think uh, Melvin Gordon's production matches what he thinks he's worth. I think his argument is, oh, well, I went to all these Pro Bowls, and it's like, well, Pro Bowl is a popularity vote. You were just popular because you had that 400-something-odd-yard game at Wisconsin. You know, you made records, so you're a popular pick. You were a first-round pick, too. So, you're in the public's eyes. But, frankly, he just gets injured and disappears from games far too often. Now, he has good games. That's for damn sure. But where was he when the Ravens played him? I don't know. He scored that one touchdown. That was his only good run all game in the in that, uh, I think, both of them. I, I got to rewatch that playoff game again. But he didn't really do much in those games. You know, for someone who wants to get paid like, he puts the team on his back, going back to that, that whole running back versus offensive line kind of debate slash talk. You know, I, he's not one of these guys who can put the team on his back, but it seems like he thinks he is and is trying to get paid like one of those guys. I don't think he is. So, look at that. 
Also in a also out west, West Coast, Best Coast, in the AFC West, Tyreek Hill. How long is he going to get suspended for? I might pick him up in fantasy now. So that's cool. I mean, they say he's innocent, so that's that's good for him. But I mean, that he does he doesn't have to be guilty for the NFL to be like, go fuck yourself, bro. You're acting like a duke, bringing unwanted attention to the league, bruh. So get on out, fucking. Roger Goodell up there, thinking he's Jabba the Hutt, sitting up high, just, How was that? Was that a good, was that a good Jabba? Did I do a good Jabba? Hey. Um, yeah, so, really excited for the team. Those are, that's, that's just how I rank the positions, I mean, in general. It's my philosophy and how I think the Ravens' philosophy kind of is, the way they've sort of built their team, mostly from the inside out, and then on defense, inside, outside, inside, inside. <laughs> but, you know, it is what it is. That's the way I feel. Let me know if you think differently. So I think that's going to do it here for me. I'm going to sign off. Um, let's just leave you with a go, Ravens. Phone's about to die, so got to get this over with. All right. See ya.